Hello everybody, my name's Mark Ling and in today's live webinar what I'm going to be teaching you is how I go about making millions of dollars every single year and you're going to get to see some, um, some great examples of, of how it's done. Um, you're going to, get to see some live websites that, uh, that I happen to own that do really well and you're going to find out as much as I possibly can fit into 90 minutes about how to find profitable niches, how to um, do keyword research the way I do it, which, um, which I think is, um, is different to the way a lot of other people do it and I think that's a critical reason for my success. Uh, you're going to get to uh, find out a bit about how I do email marketing. Um, you don't have to do email marketing to make great money online, but um, it certainly can help ramp it up even further, and I'll show you that as well. Um, and I'll be answering live questions on this particular live webinar. I, I really want you to be uh, excited about what you, you're going to be learning here, because um, and uh, make sure you clear away any distractions you might have, because I'm going to be covering a lot of stuff, and I'm going to be covering it relatively quickly in the interest of fitting in as much content as I possibly can in the next 90 minutes. <laughs> this is just a photo of me, just so you know who's actually talking to you. Um, it was a photo taken when I was in Fiji earlier in the year. Um, so yeah, that's that's me. I just turned 30 a few days ago. So um, so yeah, still I'm still relatively young and um, obviously they're doing quite well. And I'd like to see if I can get as many of you as possible making great money online as well. Even if you don't join any of my products, you should be able to go away with the information that you learn on this call. You should be able to go away with it and still manage to um, uh, to have it seriously impact your online business and um, and you should be able to make some good money with what you learn on this call, let alone whether or not you join anything that uh, join my Fill a Blueprint course, which um, which is at this address here and is open for another couple of days. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, um, I want to get into this. Um, I just want to just give you a, a, just a couple of um, bits of inspiration first before carrying on with the, the call. Um, now, I happen to have a, a website here called www.blackbook.com. I actually built this particular website. I'll just scroll into a couple of pages inside the site. I built this website in front of a live audience last year. What I did was I spent about an hour a week for 12 weeks in front of a live audience building the site, and, and most of the people in that audience were newbies, and what we did was I built this site while they built their own profitable sites. By the end of building this website, it was making, and still is, making over 500 US dollars a week in profit for me to um, profit from. So you know that's not just 500 a week gross. That's pure profit. Um, so I, I wanted to build it in front of a live audience just to prove how well my methods work. I'm really confident in what I teach because I've done it over and over again. I have dozens and dozens of websites that do extremely well, and um, and you know, I'm not afraid to show you guys live examples of, of what I do because um, you know you might learn from other people that teach you good theory, but are they actually are other people that teach you stuff are they actually doing what they teach? Well, you know that's really important that you actually learn from somebody that's actually got several examples and is willing to build websites in front of you to show you how it's done. Um, so anyway, um, just to give you an example though. Um, that particular website, I took a screenshot recently of uh, a week's earnings. As you can see, it was only a couple of weeks ago, early in April, um, and it, it's still making the same sort of money this week. Uh, I just haven't taken a screenshot again since. And as you can see, it's made uh, $1,108.90. So it's you know it's still going along very strongly, and, and I honestly haven't had time to do a lot to the website since I built it in front of the live audience, so I'm really looking forward to ramping that site up a lot further. Uh, as you can see, it's made sales of a variety of different World of Warcraft products. That's 
a, a World of Warcraft Gold Guide that's um, an Ultimate World of Warcraft Guide, Zygor's Guide, Warcraft Millionaire, Joanna's Horde Guide, I Dem Team Itemizer's Guide. You don't have to understand World of Warcraft, by the way, to understand this. I'm just rushing through, just giving you an example of the kinds of mini sites you can build. Now, when I teach you to build these sites, I, for me, the goal for you, if it's your first site, because I don't know where you're at, it might, be, might not be your first site, but if it's your first site, the goal is simply build a website that makes $50 a week. Okay? I mean, that's one twentieth of what this is making. If you can... Basically, if you can get build one site that makes fifty dollars a week, then you're at step one of my four-step process to get to ten k a month. Step one: get your site to fifty k, fifty dollars a week. Step two is to build five of them. If you've done it once, you can do it again. So you build five of them after that, and then you're making two hundred and fifty dollars a week. Step three: don't keep any of the money you're spending. You reinvest it. Um, I teach you fully how to do this inside my course, although it's, it's not very hard to do. Um, you just go to elance.com and you reinvest the entire $250 a week that you're making into getting people to build these kinds of websites for you. Uh, I teach you exactly how to do this in my course, although it's, it is very straightforward. You post projects here and say, look, I want someone to write these articles for me. I want somebody to you know, do this for me and that for me, and you just pay them to do it. You reinvest it and you churn out. Not only do you wind up churning out, say, another five websites, but you also take the sites that, you're, that are performing best for you and you reinvest into those sites so you get them ramping up because $50 a week is really just the start. You should be able to turn, once you've built a few of them, you'll be able to turn them into sites that are making you 200 to $500 a week each. And by that point, when you've got 10 websites that are making you, say, $250 a week on average, that is 10 grand a month. Okay, and it all starts with one $50 a week website. That's your apprenticeship, basically. You make one site that makes $50 a week, and you know what you're doing, and you're, you're well on your way. I've seen people get discouraged, honestly, after, um, after spending a bit of time and not making money online, and then suddenly getting to a point where they're making $50 a week, and then within 12 months, they're making $2,000 plus a week. Honestly, that first hurdle is so important. and So basically, I, I teach you the full spectrum from start to finish. Um, all right, so moving through, though, I just want to give you another example. Um, of the kind of money that you can be making. This is one of my, I've got, I can't even remember how many ClickBank accounts I've got. It's, um, it's well over 70 ClickBank accounts with different earnings in them. I've got several of them that are making over $1,000 a day. And that's the kind of potential you can get to when you get really good at this. And it all starts at the small level, okay? And, it's basically rinsing and repeating a powerful formula that works. And I'm going to show you that formula in just a moment. I just want to give you some inspiration first. Um, this is one of my better weeks with one of my accounts, 174000 US dollars. Um, but what's more important is uh, showing you what some of my best students are doing. Uh, Francisco, um, he's bought his own house, and he's almost finished paying it off with the earnings he's made, and he's told me he can pay it off tomorrow if he wants to. It's just a matter of him deciding whether he wants to invest um, the latest amount of money he made into his business or into paying off his house. He's got a, a wife and um, two lovely children, and um, you know, I'm really proud of the, the strides that he's managed to make. Uh, he showed me a screenshot of a couple of a couple of screenshots of his accounts. One of them, he's just started getting over a thousand US a day. Another one, he ran a promotion to um, his email list that I showed him how to build, and he made, in the space of four days, $23,804, um, which is absolutely incredible. So, um, you know, if this is an inspiration for you, I don't know what is. And there are several examples of um, my students that are doing very, very well that you can find, and then have a look at later, at philorama.com slash philablueprint. But... Um, 
what's more important is not what other people are doing, it's what you're doing and what you're going to do. So um, with that in mind, I strongly believe in providing you value up front and seeing the results in your own pocket before you buy stuff from me. So, um, so I'm hoping that even if you don't join a fellow blueprint, that you will take a lot of notes from what you learned today and make sure that you make money with what you learn from this particular 90 minute webinar. If you make great money from that, then um, from, from as far as I'm concerned, I know that you're going to want to come back and join my products in the future, even if it's not right now, because um, the best proof that I can possibly give you that the system works is to give you enough information right now on this particular webinar that you can go away and make great money from what you learned today. And that to me is the best proof of that my stuff works. All right, so anyway, I'll skip through this um, really quickly and get on to the meat of this call. Um, who is Mark Ling? Well, that, I've, I've explained to you who I am. I'm a guy that's built a lot of affiliate websites. I first started 10 years ago dabbling in this stuff. My, my main thing was um, I used to think to myself, well, people are going to the internet looking to how to um, for how to do things. They might type in how to speak Spanish, how to play guitar, how to train my dog, or stop dog from digging, that kind of thing. And my goal was simply to put up websites that rank highly in the search engines and then link them off to appropriate affiliate offers and earn a commission. So that's how I got started and I ramped it up um, really, really well over the years and um, and basically, uh, it's going really well. Just for those of you that don't know what affiliate marketing is, it's when you earn a commission for selling other people's products. You can earn, for instance, if someone clicks, types in, uh, if someone clicks on this particular link and they buy the product, I happen to earn 75% commission on the sale. So um, that turns out to be something like 30 or 40 dollars, or, or even more if they choose some upgrade options that are that are in there. Um, I've had people say, hey, isn't the real money in owning your own products? How much money can really be made in affiliate marketing? Well, actually, you can make money both ways. If you, are that, if, if you really think you've got a great product idea that you can put together, you know, because it can take months to put together a good product, and if you think that you can write a great sales copy, put together a good website, provide customer support and affiliate support and managed to um, you know, coordinate all of that together, and there's probably a couple of other things as well, then by all means making your own product can be profitable. But um, bear this in mind, um, I talked to the vice president of a company called clickbank.com, which, um, which has over 80,000 different affiliate products inside its marketplace. I talked to the vice president regularly, and he's told me that their top 10 people that, um, that are product owners are, le are earning less money than the top 10 people that are in their network that are only affiliates that don't own any of their own products. So um, you know, that's interesting and that's because with affiliate marketing you don't have to wait three months to have, get the next product together to promote. You can be promoting, uh, you can be promoting 10 new products every day if you, if you really wanted to go that fast. I'm just saying that um, you can scale a lot quicker in affiliate marketing. So, but both ways are definitely profitable. And personally, I happen to make money doing both methods. But um, I found it a lot easier to teach affiliate marketing. And also, my friends that are earning the, the most money, my top two friends that are earning the most money, are actually um, both making most of their money, 98% of their money from affiliate marketing, just to give you an idea. So. Um, I'd say the real money is in either method, whatever your preference happens to be. Alright, now on to the meat. How do we go about finding profitable niches? <laughs> this is what I do. I go to clickbank.com slash marketplace. That's the first thing I do. www.clickbank.com forward slash marketplace. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to necessarily choose to promote affiliate programs from ClickBank. 
Um, I might, I, I, eighty percent of the time I do, to be honest. But um, I'm, but I like to go here first, even if uh, I wind up choosing affiliate programs outside of ClickBank. The reason I go here is because they've got eighty thousand affiliate programs, and um, and it's a really it, they've got statistics that all or a very easy um, feature in their statistics that makes it very easy to tell if a niche is profitable. The next thing I do inside the list of categories, I have an, I'll just click on a random category like health and fitness, and what you'll notice is there are subcategories you can go into if you want to. You can you can search by the way for specific types of products if you want to, or you can browse straight through the products that are in here. The great thing about cl the ClickBank marketplace is it shows you um, the gravity and what the gravity is, uh, is all you have to do to understand it is um, basically see it as the number of separate affiliates who have made a sale of that product in the last week. There's a little bit more to the formula for gravity than that. For instance, if you made a sale eight weeks ago of that product, but you haven't made a sale since then, you might add 0 0.01 to the gravity, for instance. But in order to understand it, all you really need to do is just make the assumption basically that 478.83 different affiliates per week make a sale of this product here. I like I assume that if the gravity is anything greater than 30, that that niche is profitable. And it always turns out to be true for me anyway when I make that assumption. If I'm saying the niche is profitable, by the way. I'm not saying that that product is profitable, although it obviously is if the gravity is high. Um, but I'm just saying that I'm looking for a profitable niche first. So you know fat loss for idiots. Gravity of 478.83. You know that's a profitable product, but you also know that the fat loss market is a profitable niche. So you might choose to promote other products in the fat loss market other than this one, um, even if they're from outside ClickBank. We're just looking for a profitable niche here. Anything greater than 30 for me, because if the gravity is 30, then that says 30 different people around the world are having success selling that product in the last week. One of, the, one of those 30 people might have made 100 sales, but they're only adding one point to the gravity. Another person might have made three sales, and they're adding one point. 30 separate people, if the gravity is 30, 30 say, are making sales of that product in the last week. So that, to me, is a great indication that that product in particular is profitable and that that niche that it's in is profitable. Okay. So that's the first thing I do, is I look at the gravity and I look for niches that have got a gravity of 30 or more. The next thing I do is I try to find what other products there are in that niche. Here we go here, panic away, end anxiety and panic attacks. So what I'll do is I'll just go to all categories in case there are products outside of this category and I'll just type panic. I might even type anxiety in a moment as well just to see what else there is. But we'll notice that, okay, there's that product there, there's this one, there's this one to do with um, hypnosis, there's Easy Calm video coaching series, there, there are several of them and there's probably even more if I type anxiety. Now you'll notice that these other products have got a gravity that's um, at the moment it's under 30. That doesn't matter because I just want to make sure that, the, that there's at least one product inside that niche that has a gravity of above 30. That way I know that there is money in the panic attacks slash anxiety niche. All right, which means that these other products, I might choose to promote those as well, and I probably will, um, it, and they might have a low gravity just simply because they might not have been around for very long or, or because everyone's choosing to promote the one with the top gravity, but um, I will... I like to have a look, a serious look at promoting these because you know that there's money in the in the cure panic attacks stop anxiety niche. So um, from from this product, it doesn't mean that these can't be profitable as well. 
and I'll click on one of them like I've just done and you can have a look at the page and you've just got to think to yourself um, whether or not you think that if you had a panic attack for instance would this particular product interest you you've just got to put yourself in the mind of the person if you think that um, if you think that the pay, the site looks professional if it's got success stories on the page um, especially especially if they've got photo success stories and that kind of thing then chances are it's going to be profitable as well as the number one product in that niche now moving through quickly the next thing what I like to do is make a list of all of the products that I could promote inside that niche and I like to put down the percentage that they're paying out per sale and what that total dollar amount is okay and I just make a little spreadsheet just so that I know when I'm going ahead and deciding which products to promote just so I know what um, how they all fit into the um, and when I'm making my decision at the end of which ones I'm going to promote but the next thing you do is you go to Google because there are products outside of Clickbank in any niche like for instance let's say I found learn guitar to be a profitable niche then I will go to Google and I'll type learn guitar affiliate program say and now we'll see that there are programs outside of Clickbank that I could choose from I could click on this one here that says learn and master guitar affiliate program and if you click on that you'll notice that um, it's just taking a little while to load up for some reason but um, you'll notice that um, outside of Clickbank you could sign up and become an affiliate of this product what you use Clickbank for is to find profitable niches you might find that the guitar niche is profitable there's at least one product in there with a gravity of above 30 and then you can look outside of Clickbank to find other alternative options for products you can promote or alternatively you can solely promote products that are in Clickbank if that's what you prefer it's totally up to you um, up to you there but uh, you'll notice that I'll just go back to my WW Black book.com website as an example this is people that are interested in how to play World of Warcraft you'll notice that I like to review, to have at least five two three four five products that I'm reviewing on my website because you happen to usually well not always but quite often customers will buy not just one product but they'll buy more than one product off you off your website so you've got to bear that in mind it's kind of like when you go in to buy a magazine you might not just go in and buy one magazine from a magazine rack quite often you'll buy two even if both are to do with health or whatever topic it is that you're interested in um, so the same the same is true when it comes to people buying um, products online I find if someone buys a learn Spanish product quite often they'll buy two or three of them because they really want to immerse themselves in their learning and they want to learn from a variety of different methods um, to, to vary it up. There's, there's all sorts of reasons why, but people often buy more than one product. Um, if you collect their name and email address and have an autoresponder series going, which you don't have to do at all, but if you do, then you'll find sometimes people will buy one product today from you and six months later you might be recommending another product and they might buy that product from you um, and you end up with multiple sales to the same people okay so I like to choose at least five and sometimes more products there alright so just moving through quickly I know that I'm going fast but the reason for that is because I want to fit as much info as I can into the 90 minutes for this call and it is covered in just so much more detail um, in my full course here at affilorama.com slash blueprint. but I want to move on and teach you as much stuff as I possibly can so we've looked for other possible products to promote and then what you want to do is find profitable keywords 
just to show you how I found all these keywords for World of Warcraft from which to build articles around, like WOW Leveling Guide, for instance. I've never played World of Warcraft. I know nothing about this niche. You do not have to know anything about the niche that you're promoting it. What you do need to know is how to research and find profitable keywords. What I do, what I did with this particular niche, and I do it with every niche, is I look for forums in that niche. So for instance, I'll type World of Warcraft forum into Google. And you'll notice there are dozens of forums in this particular niche. I'll just click on one of them right here. It's called WOWforum.com, which WOW stands for World of Warcraft, as I found out by trawling through the forums. And you'll notice there are things like, and when you go through, you'll notice categories, and it'll say things like battlegrounds, instances, raids, player versus player, PvP, death knight. Druid, Hunter, Mage, Paladin, Priest, Rogue, Shaman, Warlock, Warrior. And you'll think to yourself, what do these things mean? I better write them down. So I wrote all of those 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 down, and I also went through the different um, different forums and had a read of what posts were being made. And what you do next is um, you'll notice. Um, You'll notice that you've, you've got a, a large number of, of words that um, you may or may not have thought of. Um, you might find the same thing when you type in, say, dog training forum as another example. Sure, you might think that you can come up with all these sort of, um, these sort of keyword phrases by yourself, but I find there's nothing better than looking through forums to find out what, um, what passionate people in that particular niche are looking for. So by trawling through dog forums, you might notice that, sorry, I'm going to turn my cell phone off here. Sorry about that, guys. Um, you might notice um, as you go through, um, people are typing things like clicker training or um, Heck, there's all sorts of things. Loose, loose leash walking. Uh, I wouldn't have thought of that. You know, and I've been in this niche for a while. Play biting problems. Um, you know, and this isn't even um, necessarily a, a very good niche, uh, a very good wet, sorry, very good forum uh, in particular. There are probably some better forums out there that are more well categorised. Like this one looks looks a lot better. Um, that you can see. There's a dog training forum inside this dog forum. And actually, it's probably the same forum. It's just that last time I might have gone to a sub part of it. I'm not quite sure. But um, you'll notice that um, there are... I'm just going through this fast, sorry. I'm just noticing people are typing in things like stop puppy from whining, dog peeing in crate. Um, that kind of thing, and yet you wind up writing down lots of keywords from trawling the forums. I noticed when I was researching the dog training niche that people were typing in words like stop dog aggression, stop dog whining, stop dog from chewing, or German shepherd training, golden retriever training, and that led me to, to realize, oh, people aren't just typing in dog training, they're typing in the name of the problem that the type of problem that they've got with their dog, and if they're typing in a problem, they obviously need dog training, so that's what they're typing in, or, or they'll type in the breed of dog that they've got plus the word training, so they might type German Shepherd training into the search engines instead of typing the word dog training, and you've got to browse the forums to come up with these kinds of words, but also I use a tool called Traffic. Travis, which I'm loading up now, which you can get for free from trafficTravis.com. And inside this tool, if you click Keyword Finder, what you do is you simply type in um, you type in the kinds of keywords you, you've just been coming up with. Um, before, you would have noticed that I'd come up with um, 
words like mage and warlock and stuff like that when it comes to World of Warcraft. So I type in something like World of Warcraft mage and click fetch keywords. And now it's giving me other ideas for the for these keywords. I'm suddenly noticing, oh, there's 98 people every day in Google typing in World of Warcraft Mage Guide. Okay, and 16 a day typing World of Warcraft Mage Leveling Guide, for instance. And there's all, all sorts of things, all sorts of types of keywords. People are typing in WOW Mage Guide. So that obviously stands for World of Warcraft Mage Guide. 346 a day into Google, 103 a day into Yahoo, 32 a day into MSN. It's really, this is a very helpful way of finding great keywords from which to build your website around because you want to get them ranking in the search engines, which I'll teach you shortly how to do. Okay, so moving through, what I might do is I might just answer, say, a couple of questions. I'll just take two questions at random um, right now and see um, see what people have typed in at this point. Okay. All right. So I've got someone saying, "You say to choose ClickBank products with a gravity of 30 plus to indicate a profitable product." This is from Jeff Whitefield. What is the best gravity range of value so that the product is not a loss or competition is too high. I, with, when it comes to gravity, I personally never think that the competition is too high. If 500 people are having success selling a product as opposed to 30, then I just know, oh my goodness, there is a lot of money to be made in that niche. All right? It just means that there's a lot of money because if 500 different people are selling that product then gee there's no reason why I can't make sales of that product too and take my piece of the pie. I'm sure you might say there's too much competition for you to be the number one player in that market. But you don't have to be the number one player. You just have to be one of those 520 people that are making say you know like a, a few sales like a, maybe a sale a day of that product. Or something like that. I mean, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're still. You've, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to put together a site that makes you at least fifty dollars a week, if not five hundred plus dollars a week in that niche. If other people are succeeding too, one thing I know is that a lot of there's often a lot of competition, but there is rarely a lot of good competition. Most people don't follow. Um, a, a set blueprint like the blueprint I provided, a filler blueprint, um, which is at, um, go back up to the top, fillerama.com slash a filler blueprint. Uh, most people don't have a formula like that. Most people just are doing a lot of guesswork about what they're doing and they're doing a lot wrong and it's not hard to move past those people and put yourself into the top 10% of people, which which means that just about every website you put together will make you um, will make you at least some money, if not a lot of money. All right, so um, I hope that answers that question properly. Um, basically, um, I don't I don't mind. Now I'm going to answer one more question. Um, I've, I've got um, Craig Barmore saying, "Is pay per click a good starter while getting organic up?" Pay-per-click is always very, very good, and I will cover that later in this lesson, um, but um, the thing is, uh, when it comes to um, pay-per-click, is you don't have to do pay-per-click to make great money online, but I'm going to show you how you can make money from, from both. You can make money from natural search stuff, like I do. I rank highly in the search engines, and also, if you, if you want to ramp things up even faster, Certainly, if you're going to pay for your traffic, then for your visitors, then absolutely, um, pay per click is fantastic, and I will show you that later in this lesson. I'll just answer one more question from An Angela Ward, um, who says, "Mark, you said you didn't know anything about World of Warcraft. Where did you get all your site content from?" Well, I just went to a website called 
www.elance.com and I just paid somebody to write the articles. I just decided on what topics and I made a post. I, I show you inside my um, w, inside my um, course how to do it, but it is very straightforward. You could do it. You can figure it out yourself. It's very easy. You just post a project saying, I want somebody that's experienced and has played World of Warcraft uh, and can write me the um, 30 separate articles and or, or whatever. And then you get and it, people submitting proposals. People will give you examples of articles they've written before. Then you can choose somebody and get them to write the articles for you if you don't want to write them yourself. All right? Um, so... That's a, a simple way of doing it. Or, if you want to, if you can write the articles yourself. Um, maybe World of Warcraft would be a difficult one, but let's say even if you don't know anything about dog training, there's no reason why you can't go and get out 30 different dog training books, watch a few dog training DVDs, and learn. Um, just immerse yourself in the topic for a week or so, and then start writing articles yourself. Uh, if you know, if you are on that bigger budget that you have to write them yourself and that's how a lot of people start and that's how I started and that that works well as well. Usually the first five take the longest and then you build up speed and you get better at it. Okay, I better move through because I want to cover as much as I can on this particular webinar. I've talked about finding profitable keywords using forum research and traffic Travis and the Google keyword tool. I haven't mentioned that but if, um, if you type Google keyword tool into Google, you'll find that there's a keyword tool there, which is also free, like Traffic Travis's, and you can find keywords that way by typing in phrases into there. I know that I'm going really fast, and I apologize for that. I'm just trying to fit as much as I can into the 90 minutes for this webinar so that you can go away um, with a lot of just as much knowledge as I can possibly impart onto you, whether or not you choose to decide to buy my Philip Blueprint product. So, moving forward. I find product name keywords and crisis keywords to be the most profitable keywords. I'll just give you um, a reasons why. When it comes to product names, Let's say somebody is searching, is, comes across a product like Daniel's Dog Training, and they're considering buying it. But they might think to themselves, you know what, I just want to see what other people have to say about that product. So they'll type into Google, Daniel's Dog Training Review, and press Enter. And then they might come across your review of that product, which might be a, a positive review. And then they decide to click the link on your review to the website and decide to buy. And you earn, say, 70% commission on the sale because you helped close that sale. Now, as you can see, product names quite often are people that are on the verge of buying, and hence I find that they usually convert around about 8 to 10 times as highly as any other type of keyword. So, um, for instance, I'll just type into Google um, Zygor's Guide Review into Google and press Enter. And you'll notice right here, my site comes up number one. And I get around about eight visitors a day visiting this particular review. It might not sound like much, but um, I make a sale every one and a half days of this product as a result of that. And I'll just go back and show you my screenshot here. As you can see, on the 17th, they made a sale of WW Zygor. On the 14th, they made a sale of WW Zygor. As a result, I just managed to make a sale every, roughly every one and a half days of that product from relatively few visitors. So um, it is a very profitable thing to do, to um, write reviews of products, positive reviews as well. If you don't think the product is worthy of a positive review, just don't review it because it's not really going to help you much. Um, but otherwise, if it, if it is good, then you give it a positive review and it's likely to make um, convert to sales. Um, the other type of keywords that are 
really profitable and most niches are crisis keywords. And by crisis, I'm thinking, now, what makes somebody absolutely need a product in that, in that particular niche? I'm not talking about someone that's typing in something like, say, dog training or puppy training. Sure, they might want a puppy training product or a dog training product, but they're not the, the person that is having such a bad crisis that they absolutely need the best possible dog training information and they will pay for it. People that need the information are people typing in things like stop dog aggression. And they might type stop dog aggression into Google, say, because their dog is so aggressive that it attacks um, people and other dogs and is in danger of being put down. And hence, they absolutely need the right dog training information, the best information, and they'll even pay money for it. Um, so when it comes to dog training, uh, I prefer to think of keywords like stop dog aggression, stop dog biting, stop dog chewing. You know, it might be chewing up your valuable possessions, stop dog digging, that kind of thing. Or um, so those are crisis keywords, and I figure that um, it, it's just really important that you think of all the crises people might have before you start adding in keyword phrases like German Shepherd training. That's a great phrase and it does convert well, but it doesn't convert as well as say a phrase like stop dog aggression. So I like to make sure that I've got my crisis keywords covered first um, after the product name. So for instance, you might type dog aggression into Google. And right now I've noticed uh, that I've got my website right here, number two in Google, uh, one of my sites, I've got more than one dog training site by the way, but one of them is coming up right there at number two, dogobedienceadvice.com. And I purposely wanted to make sure that that ranked on that search term, dog aggression, that you see up there. And I have several articles in there to do with dog aggression as well, because it is such a profitable keyword. Um, Right, moving forward. Now, when it comes to landing pages, a landing page is just a page on your website, by the way. I don't want you to think it's anything complicated here. But um, I happen to use different landing pages for my regular articles than I do for pay-per-click. If pay-per-click's not your thing, don't worry. I'm still going to be covering more stuff on this webinar in just a moment to do with how to get your website ranking highly in the search engines. But I just want to, for those of you that are interested in ramping things up even faster via pay, paying for your traffic, then you'll want to know this. Just go back to my original example. For my articles, you'll notice that, um, I'll just click on one of my pages here, an article landing page will look like, like this. I always make sure that I've got an affiliate link, like a graphic that actually has a call to action and is asking for people to click on it, that links to a product that I can make money from. I, I show you how to make these kinds of graphics that um, inside my course, by the way, but um, you can always pay someone at Elance to do it for you. That um, should be relatively cheap anyway, but um, and most affiliate programs that are any good will have graphics like this in their affiliates area anyway for you to use, so you don't even have to make them, but I'm just letting you know, it's not hard. Um, I put a graphic that's got a call to action like that. I have a affiliate link here. A lot of affiliates forget to put affiliate links inside the first fold of the page before people have to scroll anywhere. And then further down the page, I've got another affiliate link here. And I've also got a newsletter sign-up box, which is optional. You don't have to do that to make money, but it sure can help boost things in the long term. Um, now that's a regular article page and then that people control through my other articles down the left. But when it comes to pay-per-click, I do things a bit different. If I type in slash guides slash idemise.php, just give you an example of one of my pay-per-click landing pages. Now, one thing I do 
with the paper click is I don't have the left hand menu bar. Okay, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But um, what I do is I have a pop over. I don't always use this, by the way, and you don't have to. But I have a pop over, come up, and try to get their name and email address. I usually delay the pop over for 20 seconds, but I wanted to just on this particular page I made it show up straight away so that we don't have to wait 20 seconds for it to load for me to show you guys. But I usually delay it by 20 seconds, and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, now, a pop-over is different to a pop-up. With a pop-up, you would have had another window, another like Firefox or Internet Explorer window popping up, and Google and other search engines don't like that, and they are really a nuisance. With a pop-over, this is actually within this web page still. It is just in front of this, but it's in the same page. So if someone clicks close here, then this closes with it. So it's not a pop-up, and um, I've not had problems with doing this with Google or other search engines. Um, now, I do that to get their name and email address. Okay, and the reason why I like to delay it by 20 seconds before it pops up is because most people, if they're... Um, if they see a pop-up and it comes up instantly without them visiting your website yet, without them getting to see what's on your page, they will either click close, they'll click the back button, or they'll enter a fake name and email address just to get rid of the box. That's not what you want. You want people to actually pay attention to it when, they're, when they see it. Otherwise, what's the point? So, um, what, most people, if they're going to leave and hit the back button, they're going to do it within the first eight seconds of them getting to the web page. So, um, and if they last longer than eight seconds, then they are likely to be reading the content that's at the web page. If they're there for 20 seconds, that's actually enough time for them to get engrossed into the content. And then, if they see a popover, then they're likely to do one of these things. They'll either close the pop-up so they can continue reading their, what, they, what they're reading, or they'll, they'll actually look at it because they're already engrossed in the page, and they'll look at it and enter a real name and email address to um, sign up to your email list, and then they'll carry on reading what they were reading in here and click their affiliate link and, and so forth. So um, I find it, to, from my testing, to work much better that way. Now, you don't have to get people subscribing to your newsletter or anything like that. You can worry about that after you've built your first five websites, say. It's it's not something that you have to do. It's just um, it is something that I like to do um, a reasonable amount of the time because it does mean you can make multiple sales to people over time. But like I say, you can start small and scale up. Um, I removed the left-hand menu bar there because I if I'm paying for my traffic, if I'm actually paying Google, say, 30 cents for everyone that clicks on my Google ad that takes them to this page, then I want to, um, by the way, I'll just show you an example of paid traffic. If you type dog aggression, you'll notice I've got an ad right here for dog obedience advice slash dog aggression. Okay, and I'll just click on it, and you'll notice that uh, I don't have a left-hand menu bar. I've just got a bunch of reviews, of dog aggression products right there, and I'm paying for that. So therefore, I t I don't bother with the menu and stuff like that. Just to give you an example. But um, anyway, when it comes to um, I want I just want people to come to the site, read my review, and click an affiliate link so they can go to the merchant's product and consider buying it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Secondly, I usually make sure that I have at least one primary product that I'm promoting in the particular page. And then I like to make sure that after that I've given them a few other options of products they can buy, and all of them have positive reviews. I actually, um, you might notice in my dog site, I've gone ahead and reviewed the products one, two, three, four. I'm going to change that to this particular method instead because I found it to be more profitable. When you review products one, two, three, four, it is actually quite hard to make a sale of the fourth product. Um, whereas when you, uh, or any product that, that's not number one and number two, whereas when you rank them like this and say, this is the um, best 
say, alliance leveling guide, or this is the best professions guide, or you might say this is the best guide for puppy owners, this is the best guide for aggressive dog owners, this is the best guide for for whatever to do with dog training or for bigger dogs, you'll actually find that you're more likely to make a sale of this product up here and one of the products down here. I am moving through this fast, but it's covered in much more detail in my course. Um, now, I always have one link minimum that links back to the rest of my site here. And the reason for that is that um, Google, if they think that you're only a one-page website, if they only saw this page and didn't see links back into the rest of my site, then they feel like there's not, you're not giving enough value to the user, that you're kind of suffocating them into just that page and those links, and they don't like it, and then they wind up raising the amount that you have to pay per click to ridiculous levels. You might have to pay a dollar a click when you should have been paying 30 cents a click, for instance. And I've found that my, uh, that my click costs go down when I link back into the rest of my website. And I just do it right at the bottom so that um, the chances are actually quite low that someone's going to click that link. But a Google website crawler robot, when they're crawling this page, they will click on all the links, go to all the places, and it will go into here and notice, oh, there's over 30 other articles on this site. This is a great website. So they go ahead and Google winds up <laughs> trawling through the rest of the site and um, basically gives me a good quality score. I do explain more of this in my course. I'm just trying to move fast so that I can cover as much as I possibly can into the 90 minutes of this call. Um, now, the other thing I do, you'll notice that this, some, you'll notice when you're putting together landing pages for pay-per-click that sometimes you, they're going to the content is going to be very, very similar. Um, very, very similar to pages that you've already got on your regular website. Not quite the same, but it'll be a bit quite similar. You don't want to be penalized with a low quality score because you've got duplicate content. So what I do is, I'll just view page source here. Um, there are options that you can use when you're setting up your website that allow you to enter in um, details like this here, robots, no index, no follow. You can look it up in Google how to do it. It's very easy. You just add this one line of code into your website. And what you do, um, the reason for that is I don't want Google to index this page because otherwise they will see it as duplicate content because the content is just so similar to other pages on my site. I've already written, I've already put up a page is very similar to this, so uh, I'm basically telling Google, look, I know that this page is duplicate content, I've set up this page for pay-per-click reasons, um, so I'm putting no index there, and then Google says, yes, that's fine, um, you've, you've stated that to no index it, I'll still give you a good quality score, okay, so you're not, they just don't like it when you wind up putting up hundreds of pages that are almost identical. Um, Okay, I know this sounds complicated. You don't really honestly have to understand this particular part um, in order to build profitable websites um, because um, I, I don't actually cover this stuff until right at the end of my course normally because it's, um, because it's not necessary. You can build really profitable websites just from ranking highly in the search engines alone and not worrying about pay-per-click stuff, and I'm going to show you now how to get high search engine rankings, okay? Now, what I like to do, first of all, what you have to do is on-page search engine optimization, all right? So, for instance, you notice this page was ranking highly for the search phrase, Zygor's Guide Review. Um, I've got other pages on my website, um, like WOW Leveling Guide. Okay, um, so what what do I do? I if I want to rank for that search phrase WOW Leveling Guide, what I do is I make sure I put WOW Leveling Guide into my title up here. I put it into my headline here. I use it at least once inside the first 50 words, 
and I use it again at least 1% of the time in the rest of the article. That is telling Google from my own website's perspective that this particular page is all about a thing called WOW Leveling Guide. And I make sure on my menu it's also called WOW Leveling Guide. So I'm linking to the page using the text WOW Leveling Guide. <clears throat> because I will show you off-page stuff you can do as well, but um, and I'll get into that in a moment, but if you're not doing all the, the, the stuff right on your web page uh, that you can control yourself, then that's going to seriously harm you in terms of trying to get high search engine rankings. I'm just going to copy the, um, the URL of this particular website and I'm going to paste it into page analysis and Traffic Travis. Remember, you can get Traffic Travis for free from trafficTravis.com. Now, I'm just going to paste that page to analyze and I'm going to type in the search engine phrase WOW Leveling Guide. What the page analysis is, is it's kind of like having a search engine expert looking over your shoulder just to check that you've done everything right. And it's given, you a, given me a B plus for that page, which isn't bad at all, it's actually very good. But um, it tells me, if I click the report summary, just some more things I can do to the page. I forgot to put it in my meta description. Um, that's a little description you put on your page to um, tell the search engines what your site's about. I'll show you how to do that in my course, but it is actually very simple um, and easy to do. And you can look that up in Google if you're not sure how to change your meta description. Um, I only used it 0.7 of a percent of the time Oh, so I only used it seven times on my page out of 926 words. Normally I have actually only about 550 words per page. That was just a particularly long article. Um, so I should have used it though at least 10 times on that page so that it's um, occurring at least 1% of the time. Other than that it looks like I've done everything else right. Just to give you an example, just for kicks, um, what would happen if um, I, I was to analyse that page and see how well it was optimised for, say, dog training. How likely is this to be ranked for, for a search term like dog training, say? Well, D+, plus, okay, which is surprising that it was even a D plus and not a D minus. As you'll see, the main reason is because it's got a Google page rank of 1. That's probably why it's a D plus and not a D minus. If it was 0, it might have been lower. But... Um, it says here, I should include the search engine phrase and the keywords and the description and the page title and the H1 tags, which means in the headline. should have used it at least 1% of the time, at least once inside the first 50 words. You know, I've done everything wrong if, I, if that page was supposed to rank for dog training, but obviously it isn't, so it's not a problem. But um, that tool is very handy for that particular purpose. Next thing you do is off-page optimization. You, you want to build links to your website, and you want to build them um, in such a way that Google knows that this page here is all about a topic called WOW Leveling Guide. Or if you've got this page here, so that Google knows that this page is all about a topic called Zygor's Guide Review, for instance. Now, what you want to do, how do you build these incoming links? And how do you make the search engines know that from those incoming links that this, this site is all about a topic called Zygor's Guide Review? One thing you can do is you can write articles and submit them to article sites like www.ezinearticles.com. I'll show you um, some advanced methods in a moment as well, but we'll start with this method. Um, as you'll see, there are you, several articles being submitted to the site every day. All right, um, and it's quite interesting just trawling through what articles are, are being written about. We'll have a look at this one. Um, start a dog training business. All right, so this person's written an article, and at the moment, um, they're linking to their website using the the anchor text, that is called anchor text by the way, where it says work at home and you highlight over and 
that's the link that you click. The anchor text there is work at home. The anchor text here is home business ideas. So they are saying that this particular page, if you were to click on it, is all about a topic called work from home. And this is telling the search engines that this page, if you click on it, is all about a topic called home business ideas. What you want to do is you want to, um, say, submit an article that is all about how to play World of Warcraft, say if you want to rank the Zygor's Guide Review, and at the bottom have a link saying Zygor's Guide Review, linking to the Zygor's Guide Review page. And maybe even another link back into your main page of your website or to another page on your site. That's one way of gaining incoming links. And you can automate, you can pay someone to do it for you if you can't be bothered doing it, and you just go to say www.submitedge.com or there are other services out there. If you go to submitedge.com, you can pay them something like $30 and they will write a unique article for you and they'll submit it to 100 article directories and they'll use the anchor text linking back into your web pages that you specify. And they'll mix it up as well. Um, which is something that you want to do. When you're building incoming links to your site, you don't want to use the exact same phrase every time because that looks strange to the search engines. Imagine if I got 100 links linking to this page saying Zygor's Guide Review and I don't have any other links saying anything else. That just doesn't look natural. So sometimes I'll link it up saying Zygor's Guide. Sometimes I'll link to this page saying a review of Zygor's Guide. Sometimes I might even occasionally link to the site just saying a phrase like, click here. Um, so just to let you know, but maybe a third of the time, or at least a quarter of the time, it'll say Zygor's Guide Review. I do teach you several methods of gaining incoming links in my course, but I'll just give you one extremely powerful method right now. Um, is I happen to use a service called amautomation.com. What they've got is they've got over 10,000 different blogs in a blog network. These are owned by separate people, so they're all owned by different owners. They're hosted on different servers all around the world, and they're on a variety of topics. Some are to do with topics like dog training. Others are to do with topics like animal care, or learn Spanish, or um, weight loss, nutrition, all sorts of things. Okay, and what you can do if you're a member of article of amautomation.com is you can go ahead and you can you can write blog posts and submit them to these blog sites, and they will put the blog post on their blog, and they will use the anchor text that you specify and link back to your site, and it's a great way of gaining incoming links. And what's really powerful about the software is, um, what you do is you just write one article, say, let's say you're writing an article about how to stop dog aggression, and then using the software, you just, um, you reword every sentence um, as many times as you want, but I usually reword each sentence three times. You also write in a few different variations of the anchor text that you want to use. And then, when you hit submit, it will submit it to all the relevant blogs in the category that you specify. For instance, there might be, say, 200 different dog training and animal care type blogs to submit a stop dog aggression article to. And what it does is, if you've reworded each sentence at least three times, then it will pick it will generate a unique article every time it submits it to a different blog in the network. So uh, it will generate it by putting in, by using the variations of each sentence, um, like it might use vari variation one of the first sentence and then variation two of the second sentence. And by the time it's mixed it all together, it's a unique article every single time. And that gives your links much more power when it comes to Google, and also it'll vary up the anchor text for you, and it'll submit to all of those sites, those blogs. It'll submit to all of them, in um, it'll submit to them over time. Like it won't just submit to all of them overnight. So you're not going to suddenly gain a hundred links 
overnight because that just doesn't look natural to the search engines. It looks much better if it happens over, say, two months like Article AM Automation does. So I, I find that to be very helpful personally. You don't have to use that service, of course, to build incoming links. Um, I've shown you a lot of other methods, but that is one of my secret source type methods that help me helps me gain great search engine rankings. Um, <clears throat> okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover um, another another 10 minutes of solid information, and then I'm going to take your live questions and answer as, as many of them as I can. Okay, so um, I'm just going to give this another 10 minutes to share with you some more stuff, and then I'm going to answer as many questions as I can fit in. Um, just to give you that URL again of a filler blueprint, though, it's at affillerama.com slash affiliate blueprint. I cover things much slower and in much more detail in that course. I know I'm just going super fast here today because I just want to cover as much as I can um, so that even if you don't buy, you're gaining as much value as I can possibly fit into this particular call. But it contains 60 plus step by step video lessons. It contains a members forum that I and my staff are in every day helping people out answering their questions you know, critiquing websites that they've put together, checking over all sorts of things. It contains a comprehensive search engine strategy, pay-per-click strategy, email marketing strategy, a WordPress theme that is probably worth the price of the whole product just by itself, which um, you don't have to build these sites in WordPress. I, I teach you how to build them in Excite Pro and WordPress. Um, but um, if you do, WordPress is free and it only takes you 20 minutes to put to install it and use the theme so that the theme, that while this wasn't built using the theme, this particular site, um, the theme will allow you to build sites that look exactly like this. Um, and all you have to do is plug your articles in and um, it does it all for you. And it, and it does, makes those pay-per-click pages that I showed you as well. So it's, it's an amazing theme. And it's open for five days, but I think there's only two days left now, um, just to let you know. But um, Moving back to the next thing, pay-per-click tips. In a minute, just go. Here we go. That looks better. Um, now, when it comes to pay-per-click, you can quite easily burn through a bit of cash while you're learning how to do it. Um, and you don't have to do pay-per-click, by the way, to make great money as an affiliate. But it sure can help if you want to really ramp things up. And guys that I know that are making half a million dollars a year. Um, or more are often using pay-per-click um, if, if they're making that kind of money as an affiliate. And what you need to do when you're starting out, if you want to give yourself the best possible chance of success, is to only start with six ad groups. Three of them should be product name ad groups. As you saw before, when people type in a product name plus the word review, then Chances are they're already thinking of buying that product. They just need to see a positive review of it in order to push them over the edge in order to buy. So it's a fantastic way of gaining great conversions. When you're doing looking for products to promote, look, don't just look in ClickBank, remember. Quite often um, you might find there's a little bit of competition for product name review type AdWords from ClickBank products. And that competition while it, it doesn't really matter too much and you can forge your way in there, um, quite often that competition is greatly, greatly reduced when you look for products in that niche, product names that are outside of ClickBank and you join their affiliate programs. The other way that um, if you want to be a little less, um, you want to have a little less competition is to start out your pay-per-click not in Google but in Yahoo um, and in particular, Yahoo UK and Yahoo Australia instead, because there is a lot less competition in those ones. Yet, um, sure, they get a lot less clicks than Google does, but for every dollar you spend, the return on investment is actually much higher. So you might want to consider that too. But I'm getting a little off topic. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to cover as much as I can. The other, so I go for three product name ad groups, and I go for three crisis ad groups. Um, and like I said before, a crisis ad group is um, people that absolutely need the information. Because if somebody, for instance, 
um, let's say somebody types in, say, save marriage tips. Save marriage tips, while it might convert to sales in the save marriage market, I wouldn't say that it's a crisis ad group. Because, um, sorry, if someone typed marriage tips, I should say. Because if someone types marriage tips, they might just be thinking about, oh, I'm, I'm just about to get married. What are some tips to make my marriage better and last longer? In which case, they might just be looking for free information and they're not necessarily willing to pay money for the best marriage advice. Yet if somebody types in marriage crisis into Google, or they type in stop divorce, or how do I prevent my partner from divorcing me, or something like that, then you know that they're in a crisis and they need save marriage information, and they need it so badly that they are willing to pay money for the best information. So if you're promoting a product in the save marriage market, those are the kinds of crisis ad groups you want to start with. I figure there's no point expanding into more general ad groups um, if the crisis ad groups are not making you sales. Um, for instance, um, in the dog training market, you'd be better off starting off with crisis ad groups like stop dog aggression, stop dog barking, and stop dog biting than an ad group like, say, puppy training. Um, if somebody whose dog is so aggressive that it, that it um, attacks pe children and other dogs and is in danger of getting put down, if someone with a dog like that doesn't need a dog training product, then I don't know who does. And certainly puppy training is not going to convert as well as something like that where there's an urgent problem at hand. So it's really important when you're doing pay-per-click to bid on crisis ad groups first and if you're not profiting, the first things I like to do is check my actual landing pages and make sure that they look credible. That's often the biggest mistake that newbie affiliates make when doing pay-per-click is that they'll use strange fonts and strange colors and it just looks, quite often it looks dodgy, it just doesn't look credible, the website. Secondly, I like to look and see have I chosen the right affiliate products to promote, uh, for instance, if you're promoting a puppy training product to somebody who's typed stop dog aggression, then you might be better off promoting a dog training product than puppy training, for instance. You, you've just got to look, is the, is the product appropriate and does, this, does the, the actual product itself look credible and li likely to make sales, has it got lots of success stories, that kind of thing. If, if you think you've done everything within your power, then sure, pause your ad groups and you know go to a, go on to another niche when it comes to pay per click. But I, I often find that there's a few tweaks I can make first. Um, how much do I bid? I normally bid. Um, I normally start my bidding at around a dollar a click, and then um, on sorry on product names, and I usually start around fifty to sixty cents on my crisis ad groups. And I do that so that I can get a high click-through rate to start um, because when my click-through rate is high, um, because I get put up in a higher position when I'm bidding more money, um, if my click-through rate is high, then Google thinks that um, my page is more relevant and hence they start charging me lower bid costs when um, in the future for the rest of my campaign. So what I do is for every 30 or so clicks on my ads, I start reducing the bids by about 20% um, um, until I find that my average position is between positions 4 and 6 in Google AdWords. And then I just leave it running until I've had at least 300 clicks so that I can make an informed decision as to whether or not that ad is possible, is profitable. I show you all of this in a lot more detail with, with the proper examples of me doing all of this plus um, plus also um, yeah, just, just a whole lot more about this inside, um, inside a filler blueprint. It's just I'm just rushing through trying to give you as much info as I can. I show you also how to track the profitability of your keywords and all of that kind of thing. And remember, if pay-per-click does look like it's too complicated for you or you don't have the money for it, you don't have to do pay-per-click to follow a filler blueprint. It's just I, I cover things with nothing left out of the equation from, from absolute newbie 
from registering the domain name through to all the way up to advanced and building the kinds of websites that make you thousands of dollars. So um, you get to see all, the whole spectrum on this. Um, now, I was going to cover email marketing, but um, we're running out of time. I'll just give you a couple of quick tips here. Uh, why capture emails so that you can follow up and make repeat sales to people in that particular niche. I have over 2 million people on my niche mailing list, um, just to give you an example. And, and I do keep collecting names and email addresses because it proves to be hugely profitable. Um, one of my tricks is um, the day seven trick, where on day seven, say, seven days after someone subscribed to, say, for instance, a dog training newsletter, I might happen to say to them, send an email saying, for the next 48 hours, if you decide to join Dan's dog training through the link below and send me an email back with your receipt, then I will email you back with my brand new 12 page report on how to stop any dog problem. This report covers how to stop dogs digging, barking, chewing, jumping, aggression and so forth and you're going to find this to be an indispensable guide for when your dog happens to um, have any of those problems. <clears throat> um, I'm only offering it for free for the next 48 hours if you decide to join this the following product through the link, through my link. Um, so I would strongly recommend that um, you get that product right now. And I find that I convert a heck of a lot of sales by using that particular trick. So um, you know, that's just one thing that you can do if you've captured their email address. If you don't capture their email address, you can't do that kind of thing. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through what's inside a filler blueprint and then I'm going to take your live questions and I'll stick around for a wee while answering them. So I'll probably go um, over time, but um, you know, that's just in the interest of answering all your questions. What's inside a filler blueprint? 60 plus step by step video lessons plus written versions of every lesson. A lot of people prefer just to go through the written versions of the lessons. That includes screenshots and that kind of thing, or you might prefer to, to watch my videos and copy along and build your website while you're watching me build a profitable website. Um, you can find, you'll find comprehensive search engine optimization strategy. I cover a lot more stuff than I could possibly fit into this particular call webinar, but um, but um, what you learn from this webinar will enable you to get a lot of high search engine rankings. So um, just to let you know, you should follow through on what you've learned today, but I cover it in a lot more detail in my course. Uh, and you can just copy along as I'm building a website in front of you, and you just simply build your websites at the same time. Pay-per-click strategy, you get to find my entire pay-per-click strategy in there, my email marketing strategy. Um, you get the WordPress theme that I spoke about earlier that enables you to build these kinds of websites really, really easily and enables you just to edit them very easy too. You just log in and post your article and click a button and it's, and it's up there. Um, Instapop, that popover software that I showed you before. The, um, now we're open for just five days and I think we've only got two days left just to let you know. And the reason why we only open for a short amount of time is because I want to make sure that I can provide the best possible care and assistance to all the new customers. Um, last time we were open was about six months ago, and we opened for five days then as well. Um, a lot of the students have had fantastic success, and you can read about their success stories um, on this particular page here, philorama.com slash blueprint. Um, and like to me, providing support is one of the, um, especially on our members forum, which I, you know, I'm there on there like almost every single day. Same with my staff. Um, that's quite often what the, is the critical difference that makes, uh, that gets people from A to B in achieving their goals. So hopefully, um, you should find if you make use of that, that you don't get stuck on anything in particular. Although the lessons themselves, I don't leave anything off camera. I, you get to see me build an entire website from scratch from start to finish. You just copy along with me. So 
I don't assume any prior knowledge. So you should you should find that even if you don't fully understand something, just copy me doing it, and it will work for you. And then you'll understand when you start seeing the money rolling in. Okay, it's time for me to answer your questions. So feel free to post your questions into the question uh, and answer box. Just got to find it. There we go. And I'll get through as many as I can fit in into the next, say, uh, 20 minutes or so. All right. Um, all right. Um, Gary Liggett says, do you teach how to make a page that looks as nice as your www.blackbook.com? Um, like how to make a graphic that looks good. Absolutely. You get to see me making you get to see me making that graphic right there in front of your eyes. Using I use free software that you get from getpaint.net. It's free. And I show you exactly how I built made that graphic there. And I show you how to make those moving GIF graphics that um, I showed you before as well. So yeah, you get to see how it's done. Or you can pay someone else, Elance, to do it for you. Um, Julie H says, does Google not see the other pages on the site if you don't link to them? No, Google won't see the other page, shouldn't see the other pages on your site if there are no links to them at all. Um, but if, if you've linked to them yourself, then Google can quite often find them, although if you really want a high search engine ranking, you want to at least build an, an incoming, at least one if not more, incoming links from other websites to your web pages. Have you been able to avoid the Google slap um, with your landing page and site building method from Rich Rojas? Um, yes, I, I, I don't get slapped by Google, that's the thing. And, and I cover it in much more detail inside my product, but um, yeah, it's been... Um, yeah, it's, that's part of the beauty of this particular method. Of, like, as you notice, I'm actually building quite a reasonably good quality site here. I'm not teaching you to throw up a bunch of crap and um, you know trick people into going places. I'm showing you how to build the kind of site that people are looking for, <clears throat> and it works wonderfully well. Adrian Lumberjack says, "Do you cloak your links from hijackers?" Uh, no, I don't, because I don't find that I get hijacked, because it only really happens in the make money niche. But, you know, what's the odds on somebody t looking for a dog training product, actually knowing anything about ClickBank or how to sign up for an affiliate program and that kind of thing? It's very low, so the chances of them actually typing in their own affiliate code and then buying is quite low. So, no, I don't, I don't actually worry about that kind of thing. I think other marketers often scare you into wanting to buy their link cloaking software, it's, but it's not necessary, at least from my point of view. Uh, what happens with duplicate content in catalog sites? Nish Naresh Patel says, um, well, I try to avoid duplicate content by um, making sure that I don't have duplicate content. If it is duplicate, then I'll put a, uh, a, no, in, a no follow, sorry, no index on my meta tags on at least any of the duplicates of the pages. Um, Robert Young says, and I'm moving through quickly, Robert Young says, explain more, wait a minute, I'm just going to put this, well, this website in the background while I'm answering these questions. I'm not sure if you actually, actually Actually, guys, can somebody just please tell me if is my go-to? I'm not quite sure. Is my go-to webinar? If I put it right here, so I can see right here all your questions in front of me. Can you guys see that, or is that being blocked? Because I want to make sure you can see what's in the background, and then I'll get back to questions. If someone could just tell me, so everyone sees this, or you can see the background. You see the PowerPoint slide, great, okay, cool. So I'll just go back up and answer, keep answering the questions. Okay, so Robert Young says, explain more about why you don't want paper clicks to see your entire site. I want the paper clip to see my, I want them to see my entire site, I just don't want them to see my, I just want, don't want them to index my paper click landing pages. 
I want them to see my entire site. And that's why I have a link down the bottom linking in to my entire site, which I'll show you. www.blackbook.com forward slash guides slash um, itemize.php. <coughs> and you'll notice that I link back into the rest of my site with a link at the bottom of the page right there. I do want them to see the rest of my site. I just don't want them to index this page because it is very similar to other pages on my site and I don't want them to say that that's duplicate content. So if you go to this page, Best World of Warcraft Guides, you'll notice it's got a lot of the same stuff that was in that page. So I just didn't want there to be a duplicate content issue there and it helps me with my quality score. DK Meister says, if I have money and resources to spend, why shouldn't I invest in ranking high organically? I don't know why you shouldn't invest high in ranking high organically. I didn't say not to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why not? That's, that's something that I do. Um, you know, if you've got money, then instead of doing it all yourself, you can pay people to write articles for you and to automate all of this. And that's what I recommend people do. The, the whole process here is it all starts with a $50 a week website. Okay? Once you've built one of those, it's all about duplicating that, like building three or four of them, five of them, and then taking that money and reinvesting and paying other people to do stuff for you. And when you can get to a point where other people are doing all your work for you, you know, then you find that um, you don't actually have to work all that many hours on this to coordinate it all and just to have it all become your perpetual money making machine. It's just unbelievably, it's just an unbelievable system this. Um, Greg Carter says, how many keywords should you use in your web page or blog? I usually start with, um, with 30, um, 30 articles plus um, I usually have say five of them being product name reviews and if you're talking about how many keywords, sorry, I, I mean I usually have say uh, at least three keywords in the phrase. I don't usually go for one word or two word phrases because they can be, but not only are they too competitive often, but quite often they're a bit too general and not specific enough. James Grigware says, should every page of one website have a different title, header, description and so forth. Yes, it should. Absolutely. Um, John Pearson says, great presentation. Any benefit of using Traffic Travis over, say, Market Samurai? Well, it's, they're just quite different tools. There's a lot of extra options that Traffic Travis has that Market Samurai doesn't have, and Traffic Travis, you can get it for free rather than paying $150. So. But it's up to you. They're, they're both good tools. Market Samurai is a great tool as well. You can use either, but um, why not use both even? Traffic Travis, get it free, trafficTravis.com. Okay. Rich Rojas says, how often do you add new content to all of your sites? Quite often, I'm, I'm a little lazy and I don't even add content for like two or three years. And I just see my site just making money and you know, I get the whole thing rolling and that's it. Um, and that, that's not necessarily ideal. I could make more money out of the sites if I did add new content. It's up to you though. Um, I'm going to probably start adding more content to a lot of my websites that are doing doing really well. Um, I'm going to try and automate that to a point where I'm doing adding new content every few days. Um, that's um, something you can do when you install things as a blog, like a WordPress, using the WordPress theme because you might say put 30 new articles into the sequence and then make sure it automatically posts them once every three or four days for the next say 90 days, but it's up to you how fast you want to add, art, add new content. You could just leave it at just you know, 30 articles and just try and get those ones ranking uh, and then start building your next site or you can start adding new articles. Um, that's up to you. When you're scaling up in the future, you, when you're getting enough visitors, you might even add a forum, in which case people are adding content for you. 
when they're making forum posts. So you know, there's a lot of ways of doing it. Um, Carson McTan says, what website do you use for hosting domain names, uh, hosting and domain name signing up? I use, um, for, for these kinds of websites, I recommend hostgator.com. And I'll just go there and I'll show you. It's um, just click web hosting. Uh, the baby package there is exactly what you need. You can host unlimited domains on it. That, um, it's actually really, really good. It's easy to work with. It's only $8 a month and they've got live support right there. It's very, very helpful, I find. Um, when it comes to registering your domain name, I'll show you how to do all this in my product, by the way. Um, I'll go to godaddy.com, and they're, they're pretty good. They're only about, I think, how much are dot coms? Uh, $10 a year. All right. Um, what's a good article research tool? I think, what do you mean by article? I think that Delilah Davis, Davis is asking what's a good article research tool. I think you're probably meaning a good keyword research tool, maybe. Um, in which case, um, Traffic Travis is fantastic for that. And if you follow what I taught before on doing your forum research and so forth, that's a good way of doing it. Um, and I cover it in much more detail inside my course. Um, all right. Um, we've got Mike Massage saying, do you put AdSense ads on some of your niche sites? Yes, I do. I'll show you, like um, www.haircutadvice.com. I actually struggled to make money from this site from affiliate offers because there aren't that many good profitable affiliate programs to promote in that niche. Um, I make, I do make some money out of um, out of promoting affiliate offers in here, um, especially when I promote um, some virtual hairstyle software. Um, that's in some of these pages, but um, ultimately most of the money from this particular site comes from the AdSense ads. Usually in most niches, AdSense ads make me a lot less money than affiliate, than affiliate ads. The time when you want to put AdSense ads in is when you actually can't find very good affiliate products to promote, in, in which case uh, AdSense ads work better. For instance, you might be putting together a site on laser eye surgery and the AdSense ads might be the better way to go. Okay, Adrian Lumberjack says, how many duplicate articles are you sending to the website? For example, Squidoo, Hub Pages, Ezine. I'm submitting no duplicate articles. I am submitting a unique article to each one because I use amautomation.com, which automatically spins me unique versions of the article that I write. I write one article, I write three different versions of every single sentence, and every time I click the spin button, it'll give me a brand new article, and that way it's always a unique article that gets submitted to all of those places. And I teach you how to do all of that inside the course. Okay, I've got so um, Haryani Yusuf saying, Mark, I see that all the websites evolve around article reviews to promote the products, lots of it. If you are going to hire someone to write articles from you and for you and you're just starting out, won't it cost money? Um, well, yeah, if you're going to hire someone to do it, sure, it does cost money. You go to elance.com and it's not too expensive, but yeah, it does cost money if you're hiring someone. I recommend to most people that you do hire someone to write your articles on your first website because you don't want to get bogged down. You want to make sure that you complete your first website. Get it done. It's, it's a worthwhile investment in your future just paying for it to get it done. But in saying that, if you are that short of money that you can't afford it, then fine, write your own articles. That's how I started. I was a student when I started and I was living off a student loan plus um, a little part-time job I had at Pizza Hut. So I had to write my own articles. And it, that's fine, you can do that. But if you have any extra money, then 
paying someone else to do it for you uh, is, is quite a good idea. I mean, you could just work some overtime at your job, maybe, for instance, and, and use that money to pay someone to write the articles. Um, you know, some people don't like article writing, and that's one way of doing it. Julie H says, do you recommend AM Automation over Article Marketer? Absolutely. AM Automation is the best service, the one that I've got the most results from. Romy Marcias says, sorry, but I don't get anchor text. Anchor text is, um, that is the link, that is the, let's see if I can find an example. This is anchor text. See how it says short hairstyles right there? And it links to a page all about short, it, it is a link to a page about short hairstyles if I click on it. That is anchor text. Short hairstyles is the anchor text. It's the, it's the text that you're using to describe the link that they're going to click on. That's what anchor text is. Bill Kernodal says, does AM Automation show you how to format the article with three different sentences, three different articles, or some other way to list it so it's clear? Yes, it does. It allows you to simply, um, it, you just put your article in, and then it will show each sentence one by one on the screen and ask you to reword it three times. Or it, reword it as many times as you want, I should say. I recommend a minimum of three times. And I, I fully show all of that inside my course as well, by the way. Um, Dave Ford says, if I'm directing people to a capture page managed by someone else, would it be better, more beneficial, to send them to my own web page with a link to the capture page which is managed by someone else? Um, I'm not quite sure I understand what you're asking, but um, I reckon that it's much, always better to build your own asset and link people to your own website first rather than um, straight to someone else's. Um, that, that's just how I operate anyway. And um, managed by someone else, well, I, I mean, I much prefer to own my own mailing list myself. That's what I teach anyway. Um, but Salen G just says, um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, you're welcome. And you said, I'm a little confused about product reviews. Do you pay someone at Elance to write a review as well. Yes, yes, you can pay them to write reviews for you. And I've, I've also got this email template that's inside my product that you can use to send to product owners that will quite frequently, no, they won't always, but quite frequently, um, as long as you put your site together first, they'll quite frequently give you a free copy of their product. So, um, because they know you're going to be promoting their product. So that makes it easier to get the reviews written. Okay, I've got Kip Sen saying, do I build the landing pages as separate websites with unique URL and have a link available to the main site? No, I put it on the exact same website, not with a unique URL, but I do have a link available to the main website at the bottom. Julie H says, is Google getting too crowded, competitive and expensive? No, Google is not too crowded competitive and expensive. Maybe it is expensive if you're brand new, but it's not too crowded at all. This is all very relatively new. But you've also got to remember, Google isn't the only search engine anyway. I make a lot of my profit from using MSN and Yahoo, particularly Yahoo UK and Yahoo Australia that no one seems to bother to, or not as many people seem to bother to set up accounts there with and promote products through there. So if you find Google's too competitive, use Yahoo. It's um, the return on investment's higher. Sure, there are less clicks, but um, you might make more money back on each dollar that you do spend. Um, I've had a couple people asking if I can offer to have a payment plan, and I'm sorry, but um, using the payment provider that I'm using, I, I don't actually know how to um, how to make that available. And we're not offering a payment plan because we, we price the course actually well under price anyway. The, um, I, I've seen other people put together courses that are less comprehensive and sell them for $1,000. Personally, I know that 
from selling this course, if I'd sold it at a thousand dollars, personally, I know I would have actually made way more than double the amount of money from it. People um, like it is a more than a thousand dollar course, and I'm selling it at one hundred ninety-seven dollars because I want to make it accessible to as many different people as possible, and also. Um, also, I just get a really big buzz out of seeing people making great money online. It's just something that um, I've been doing for years. Uh, I taught my, my own father how to do it, and he's doing really well. He was actually working for the government for over 30 years. He hated his job, and um, I, I told him, like, just quit your job, and I'll sit down with you every night and teach you this stuff. And now he's making a, way more than he was making for the government. Um, taught numerous friends how to do it, and it's um, it's just incredibly satisfying seeing a lot of people do it. There's, there's a lot of crap out there on the internet these days, uh, a lot of um, offers teaching you how to make money online where the person making money is actually making more money teaching you how to make money online than they're actually making doing stuff. From me, you actually see live website examples because I'm actually doing what I teach, and I make way more money doing what I teach than, than actually teaching it. So I've gone off topic here, but I'm just basically saying, for me, I, I think that the, the price is actually very reasonable when you um, consider just how much time and effort has gone into putting this together. And I've newbie proofed it as much as I can. Um, all right, so... Peter King has, has just mentioned that it seems that Fill a Blueprint is aimed squarely at newbies. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. It's not aimed at newbies. I I didn't see a point in making a product that's only aimed at newbies or only aimed at advanced people. I thought, don't you want to know the whole process? Don't you want to don't people want to know everything from start to finish? Like not just how to take a site from making fifty let's say $50 a week to $300 a week, or not how to take a site from 500 to 1,000. I don't want to leave any gaps. I'm showing you the whole spectrum. How to s so people, I mean, several affiliates, uh, people out there, if you're already making $2,000 a week, you follow this course and you'll learn enough methods to take, to triple that income or more. I mean, I, I cover the full spectrum from start to finish with no gaps in between. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, look, if you're advanced and already making good money, then why don't, why don't you take the money you're making and pay people to implement the blueprint and start building lots of these kinds of profitable sites for you? So really, um, I think it's good for anybody. A lot of advanced people still aren't very good at ranking highly in the search engines, for instance, or there's always things that you might not know. I, I don't know many people that teach email marketing, for instance, the way I do. Um, so you might find that, um, if you're advanced, I still think you'll find that that is worth the price of the course in of itself. There are a lot of good reasons for getting it, even if you're um, at an advanced level. Julie H. says, product name ad groups, concerns with rights to use names or affiliate limitations on names. Absolutely. I think um, about 10% of the time you're not allowed to use the trademark name, in which case usually Google, when you're, when you're typing in your ad, just comes up in red saying that there's a trademark going on there and it won't let you do it, in which case... You just say, okay, I'm not going to worry about that particular one. All right? But most products in ClickBank don't have that problem because most of them are, are ha more than happy for you to bid on their product name because they know you're helping them close the sale. You know, The person is looking for a review of their product for a reason because they're not quite sure about buying and you're helping them close the sale. Um, but if you ever get contacted by a merchant saying to pull an ad down, just pull it down. It's not worth worrying about. Um, and also, you might know, just check out the terms and conditions in the affiliates area of the affiliate program you're promoting just to check to see if it's against the terms and conditions to bid on the, their product name. Meg S. says, if going outside of ClickBank, how do you evaluate a program 
and what its likelihood of problems of not being paid. Like what other affiliate networks beyond Commission Junction, ClickBank and Pay.com which you respect? Well, um, no, that, that is a good question, although I'm never usually worried about the payment because I've, I've only once come across an offer where I got stiffed on my payment, only once. And the, the reason is, merchants know that they, they run an affiliate program for a reason. They want to make money. If, you, if they don't pay you, then you're going to stop promoting their product. If you stop promoting their product, they're losing money that they would have been making. It makes absolutely no sense at all for them to stop paying you. The only reason that um, you might not get paid is uh, the only reason I can come up with is because the website goes under. Like, and that was the reason why I didn't get paid once. And that, that is a very rare thing to happen. Um, so, yeah, just just saying, like, you should be absolutely fine there on, on most things that you promote. Ken Kim Smith says, where do you get your graphics for your websites or your blogs, and do you teach how to get them on there? Yes, I teach you how to get them on there. I teach the lot. I teach you how to make them yourself. Or you can go to Elance and pay someone to make them for you. Or, quite often in the affiliates area of a product you're promoting, like, say, www.savemymarriagetoday.com. Let's go there. Quite often in the affiliate area of the product that you're promoting, which I'll just scroll to the bottom, they often have them in there as well. And let's have a look. Um, whoops, I clicked resources. I should have typed, gone to the affiliates area. Affiliates, there we go. And I'll click login without typing it. It still lets me. And I click banners, and what have we got? We've got banner ads, banner ads, there we go. Don't even have to make them, just use that. <laughs> nice and easy. Find that frequently inside um, affiliate areas, so that's handy. Um, I've got... Another person asking about AdSense ads, I already answered that question before. Um, Rita Gabriel says, do you keep each product name ad group separate? Yes, I do keep them separate. Um, Daniel Scandaliato says, is there a way to get a replay of this? I know I'm going so fast, I'm really sorry, I just tried to cover as much as I could. Yes, I will post a replay. I'll put that up on my blog. I'll just show you where that is. www.affilorama.com slash blog. I'll put it up here somewhere. Okay, so just give me a, a day or so and I'll put, put it up, the replay of this, guys. Okay, so... Uh, I've got another person saying, Rick White saying, is it okay to link directly to an affiliate sales copy or landing page they may have for a physical product when doing pay-per-click? Yes, you can do that. Although I usually find that when um, when I link to a review first before they get to the product, that my conversion rates are a lot higher because, as I said before, quite often people will go to a product and they'll and they'll think, okay, now I just have to see a review of that product before I buy it. But if you've already reviewed the product and then they go to the, the page, they, they already think to themselves, okay, I've already seen a positive review of this product. Now I'm thinking of buying. Okay, I'll go buy it. And they're not going like, to hit the, you know, go, go to Google to find a review of the product and click someone else's affiliate link. The conversion rates are often double from going to your own site first. Um, plus, when you do it through your own site, you're just you're building your own asset. It means even if that merchant, for whatever reason, it, it never happens, but if they did pull away their affiliate program or or something like that or reduce commissions, then you can just change all your pages over to promote another product, nice and easy. And it's just it's just a better habit to have. I find it works way better. I've got a lot of people asking what hosting I use. Uh, hostgator.com, I, I covered that before. Delilah Davis says, will your methods work for e-commerce sites? Absolutely. 
these methods work extremely well for e-commerce sites and I do actually own several of those as well. All right, um, I think that um, I think that I'm going to have to um, end the call after answering another couple of questions. I know there are several on here, but um, but I, I've just got a really tight schedule at the moment. With um, I've only just opened the product, and I want to get back into the um, into answering everybody's questions inside the support system because. Um, Basically, like I'm here to help everybody, and I, I want to just get back to the members forum and stuff at the moment. Um, but um, I just want to thank everyone for being on the call. I'll answer, say, three more questions, and I, I strongly recommend that you consider getting this product. I don't think that you'll possibly find a better product out there that teaches this kind of stuff because most people that teach the make money stuff are actually making more money teaching you how to make money than actually doing what they teach, and hence. There are often gaps in what you'll learn. Here, um, that's not the case. I make more than 90% of my income actually doing what I teach, and I teach it in step-by-step -step detail right here. So I'd strongly consider doing, going there if I were you. OK, I'm going to answer three more questions. Um, let's have a look. Got John Pearson saying, uh, reading the sales page, you mentioned some early bird offerings, um, and you're saying are these still available? Um, I've decided to make them available to everyone that joins within the five days. I was going to limit them to the first hundred and five hundred people, and I did get a lot of emails from people that were upset about missing out, and then I just thought, well, actually, it's not really going to hurt. These aren't the kinds of things that it's really going to hurt if I let more people have access to them, so I've decided anyone that joins will get access to those bonuses Okay, if you join before it closes. Um, all right, Barry Gordon says, do you include Web 2.0 marketing, such as Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, etc.? Yes, I do cover that as well, but it's not necessary, like you don't have to do that to Build these kinds of sites, but I I cover it in some extra extra lessons. All right, um, I'll just see if I can find one more question. I mean, we've got a lot of questions on the air. I'm just seeing what one. Um, I've got. Um, I'll answer a couple of questions actually. Um, Fred just says I've purchased um, and just said, were these sites built using Excite Pro? Well, actually, that site was built using Excite Pro. Inside the lessons, I teach you how to build sites using Excite Pro, and then I also teach you how to build the exact same sites using WordPress. So you've got two options there. Or you could follow along with the Excite Pro lessons and build them using just about any software like Dreamweaver or FrontPage. It'll, it'll all work. They're all relatively similar at the end of the day. All right, I'll answer one more question. Um, Rick H says, do you do these live presentations for members on an ongoing basis? Yes, I will be doing live ongoing presentations for members. Um, so, and, I, and, I, and I do do them reasonably regularly. I don't do them so regularly that you have information overload. I believe there is plenty of information inside the product itself. Um, and there is also a lot of... Um, I mean, I'm on the forum answering questions and stuff almost every day, um, and like uh, I find if I record too many live presentations that people get suffer from information overload and it becomes difficult for them to get get stuff done. So uh, I, I like to have these sort of sessions roughly um, once a month, um, but um, I will be running it at least a couple of um, live question and answer sessions this month in particular to, um, to make sure all the new members um, get to access me live answering questions with live video as well. So that will be happening shortly. So anyway guys, I just want to say a big thank you for taking the time to, to be on the webinar. Even if you don't buy the product, I strongly recommend that you start building one of these kinds of websites. I mean, just look at my www.blackbook.com site and try and duplicate that kind of thing um, in, in another niche. And um, it, 
should work wonderfully well for you. But if you want the step-by-step -step blueprint um, with video lessons and more, and and also you get all the follow-ups, and you're going to get, you know, whenever I release a filler blueprint 3.0, which might be a year from now, that kind of thing, you're going to get all you're going to get lifetime access. So, you know, it's a, it's a great program to be part of. Um, so anyway, uh, it's going to be open for another couple of days. I, I really hope that um, you guys strongly consider getting this. I've put my whole heart into this product to make it as, um, just as easy to follow as possible, and it's a strategy that's been proven to work. I, I've even built websites in front of a live audience before using this method that, that just proves that it makes, makes great money. Um, and I'm even considering building another live website in front of the members just to... Um, just to show you guys again, um, I just want to see. I'll, I'll see what the demand is for that, and um, that's something I'm strongly considering doing. Um, anyway, thanks for being on the on this particular webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. Take action, and I'll see you later, guys. Yeah.